Hello, everyone. Good morning. Hello. We have no leftover questions today. Because I managed to get through them all last time. Hello, Nox Anguis. Good morning. You appear to be the first one in. Hello, Irian. With me, of course, is Martin. When it's not Martin, it's Jay. It's not my birthday, my birthday's tomorrow. Hello, Jettisero. Hello, Star. Good morning, Jamek. No, it is Martin today, Star. <laughs> when it's not Martin, it's Jay. But it is Martin today. You just got home in time from work and shopping. Do you work through the night, Nox Anguis, or just a very different time zone? 7 a.m. Pacific Coast time. 10 a.m. my time. My work day is just starting. <laughs> Short day for me, though. I have a meeting after this and then Griddle Champions. And that's pretty much it. Why is Orkira my highest damage dealer? Oh. <laughs> because this is not an Ashara DPS formation, this is... This is nothing. <laughs> okay. Set up this Trials of Mount Tiamat formation, not paying attention, I just let my default Ashara DPS formation load in, but I didn't actually put Ashara in. So it's whatever it feels like being, I guess. It's supposed to be a Shara DPS, except the star of the show is not here. You'll see that in just a minute. Hello, Steven. Quick weird question. Has anyone ever heard of Evil and Summoning Waffles as her mount and her ult? Happened for me earlier this week. Nope. That would be a fun Easter egg. There's like an extremely low chance that that might happen. That would be a fun Easter egg. But I have not heard of it. All right, let's do it. Like it or not, here I come. Greetings, champions. Welcome to Mars Guiding Hand. I am Mars. This is Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms, 
a free-to-play, officially licensed Dungeons & Dragons formation strategy management video game from Codename Entertainment. On this daily show, we take a look at the latest content, discuss strategies, and answer any questions that you might have about the game. I aim for 50 questions per show. Since I switched to doing daily, I've been hitting that every time and going way over, in fact. No, it's episode 94. No, I'm, I'm looking... I'm, I'm looking right at my calendar. Episode 94 is today. Yeah. Today is Friday. December 10th. And in this 94th episode, we will be continuing to discuss Simril. I'll also be uh, wrapping up this um, Charles Mount Tiamat day one run. This is the... Oh, it ends in one hour. Yeah, I should go ahead and finish that up. Yeah, you see, this is... <laughs> I tried to set up this Ashara DPS formation, not paying much attention, and it didn't load Ashara in here because my Ashara is banned. Con score of 10 or higher. So I guess no Ashara. <laughs> so I can't put her in here, so I put Kroll in here instead. So right now, Orkira is actually my DPS, weirdly enough, but we're gonna go ahead and end this one. And I have enough to actually start another free play in the event. Bum, 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 bum. So I am going to go to... Oh, nice! Looks like I've got the high score. Cool, cool, cool. Team Matt's got nothing on this team. Alright. Let's go back to Simrul. And I'm actually going to do... Hmm... You know what? Martin, can we do a poll, please? Can we do a poll for whether I should do a free play for Kroll, Lucius, or Jorvan? And whichever one chat decides, whichever one chat votes on, uh, I will do a deep push and go as far as I can. So this would be your opportunity, chat, if you want to see me put together a formation for pushing as far as possible. Uh, I think Kroll is particularly a good formation for that, for this event. But I will do Lucius or Jorvan, if that's what chat decides. So, you all vote on that. Meanwhile, I will switch over to my other game. And thank you, Martin. Martin is also catching questions in chat. Oh, this is interesting. Hey, Martin. Uh, look at this. I don't know if you noticed, but a couple minutes ago, when I closed the notification on my main game on Steam, it didn't have the preview image. It just had the text. But over here on Epic, it's the whole package deal. That's weird. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, as you can see, I've managed to make it to stage 66. This is the Jorvan Unlock run that I started on stream yesterday. So we're probably going to end it here, because uh, every boss fight past 40 has been a real struggle. So I'm going to uh, probably just go ahead and end this. My next task on this new player account on Epic especially now that I have a little bit of favor. Oh, hey, look at that. I've unlocked the right to go to the Tomb of Annihilation. Yep, looks like you've decided to visit a new campaign. That's because you made me do it, Brunor. Yeah. <laughs> All right, get out of here, Tutorial Dwarf. I'm busy. I've got things to do. Next up, I'm unlocking Kroll. Good morning. Good morning to everyone who is just joining us. And good morning to everyone who has already been here, of course. <laughs> Your van unlocked. My locksmithing company. Yeah, captions. Captions will forever be captions. 
I don't know if we'll ever have a perfect captioning system. We just, we have what we have and we'll work with it. So what is today's tea? It is a miserable gray sky, rainy day, just how I like it over here. So I have an Earl Grey tea from Twinnings. Not my fanciest Earl Grey, basically my default Earl Grey. But I do like it very much. Apparently my mug warmer wasn't turned on, it is now. So that'll keep that piping hot for me. Well, not piping hot. Borderline steaming hot. Hot enough that it is hot, but not enough that it hurts. Pretty much perfect. Mean Keb, uh, this is a new account on the Epic Game Store. I'm basically dual accounting on my show now. I have my main game running simultaneously. And I switch back and forth between them to show off different things. It's a pretty quick turnaround. It takes me a few seconds. Roll won the poll. Okay, we're going to be going to... Uh, <laughs> thanks for voting in the Kroll poll. We're going to be going to a Kroll free play on my main account. I'm doing a deep push to go as far as we can. So while... While my second account is running this in the background here, I will switch back to my main and we will set that up. There we go. So chat voted on doing a crawl free play deep push. Thank you. That's the one I wanted. Hope that didn't weigh the vote too much. Put my finger on the scales. <laughs> but here we go. First things first, familiars, click level, and I'll take a, a few of them off so it's not as much uh, visual clutter. So uh, my default these days for doing a deep push is I'm an Ashara TPS main. I am heavily invested in my Ashara. She's all legendaries. One of them is even level 10. So. We're definitely going to play in a Shara formation. So let me just bring her out here. Seems like a good spot for Akira. Get Donar. Get Baloth. Get Omen. And that's probably the right spot for Assassin. I'll get Briv. Briv needs to go in front. Freely, of course, and go anywhere. Pitch. Okoria. Averin. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's see, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Ah, okay. So no, not there. One, two, three, one, two, one, two. Nope. Don't think I'm gonna be able to get assassin. Oh, unless, unless I do this, and then it'll be one, two, one, two, one, two. Aha, that works. If I put Ashara here, okay, great. And then I also have Ashara and Omen adjacent to Averin. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Comment from Flylighter in chat. I am brand new. Started playing this morning. Welcome to Idle Champions. And oh boy, are those numbers ever so slightly larger than mine. Yeah. Um, I know. I've been playing for... Um, almost four and a half years. Pretty much daily. Occasional short breaks of a week or less. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I play the game a lot. And I have, like, all the content and really love it. That being said, I also understand with great power comes great responsibility. It's actually one of the core values of uh, Codename Entertainment. And so, in that regard, I have brought that core value into my own show. Back on Monday, since we switched to doing a, a daily show for Mars Guiding Hand, I also started a brand new account. I have a brand new account. There we go. Right over here. 
so that all the new players out there can also see how I would play a brand new account so that I can give you advice from a very, a very low power value overall. I mean, my highest item level is apparently one currently, so. <laughs> yeah, my tea today is Twinnings Earl Grey. It's not super fancy, it's just my default. My default Earl Grey for a rainy day. I like my mug warmer very much, Maelstrom. It's a very good mug warmer. My partner got it for me. It was a surprise gift. Something I didn't realize that I needed, but as soon as I had it, I realized, oh yes, I very much needed this. Uh, Nobis asks, I'm about to unlock Split the Party 2. I only need a slot 1 champion. Which one should I go with? Deacon for speed or Orkira for power? Make your choice between those two, depending on what you need. Dreamwalker Deslin, even if not top tier, is Drift's as DPS for the Companions group viable-ish? Every DPS is viable. Every DPS is viable. Characters that aren't even DPS are DPS viable. I don't know if you caught it, but at the beginning of my stream, I was accidentally running Orkira DPS, and it went to nearly stage 800. It really just comes down to formation design. You gotta know what you're doing, you gotta know how to actually work with your champions. And gear. And blessings. And patron perks. And achievements. And consumables. There's a lot. There's a lot of factors. And your Modron core. A lot of factors that all pile on together to determine your game experience. How powerful your formation is going to be. How far you're going to get in your run. Dredst is absolutely a viable DPS. Brunor is a viable DPS, even though he's not a DPS. So, if what you want is to... I'm trying to dodge snowflakes. If what you want is to play a character that you want, regardless of their actual power, their presence in the meta, then do that. If what you want is to... Okay, that's enough of that. If what you want is absolute power and going as far as possible, then you should observe the meta and play the popular DPS choices of the time. Right now, Ashara, Zorbu, uh, Kron and Artemis for the big, big, big spenders. switch back to my main because those guys are doing okay for themselves on the epic account on the new account so back on my main account let's continue setting this formation up so I've got my characters pretty much where I want them to be Freely's position Hitch's position Old Coria's position none of those matter but I do want Orkira in the back. I want Omen in a position that he would be furthest from Ashara. Because I'm going to be specking Omen into Assassin Specialization. Uh, Bayloth needs to be in a column in front of or behind your DPS. And ideally, in the column behind your tank. So this is the ideal setup for that. Tank. Bailoth, Ashara right there. And Donar needs to be same column or in front of your DPS. Averin, of course, you want adjacencies. So, six adjacencies. Good. Fantastic. All right. Let's go. Boom, 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 boom. I'm holding the F key to place familiars quickly. If you don't know that trick, now you do. 
and then just left click. And now I'm gonna set this to times 100. Just get all these specializations going at the same time. Oh, hey, I guess this rolled out. Check this out. Bond, humans, champions from formation targeted one. Bond, dwarves and elves, champions from formation targeted two. Bond, potpourri, champions in formation targeted three. Thank you, devs. Something people have been asking for for a long, 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 long time. Years, perhaps. Yeah, if you don't see that, you may need to close and reopen your game. Yeah, it's on a few champions. Look around. See if you can find them all. <laughs> Take more daggers. Tail feather. Show must go on. There's assassin. Shield guarding doesn't matter. Sturdy mirrors. Okay, and now just, um, oh yeah, short folk. Oh, really? <laughs> Come on, devs. <laughs> you did the first bond, but not the second one? Really? That just seems like an oversight. I'll poke them about it. Just a second. Shara's first set of bonds shows number of applicable champions, but not her second set of bond choices. Okay. They're not in office yet, but they'll see it when they do get in. And I'm going to take half-bloods, because we do have one half-blood. It's a half-elf, Avrin. We have two half-bloods, Omen, another half-elf. And then we have Briv, a half-orc. That's another half-blood. That's three. So we've got three potpourri and three half-bloods. That's enough. Because, um, yeah, Paragon of Curse of Ball increase the potency of each bond, Ashara gains the effect of a given bond if at least three champions are affected by it. So yeah, first bond, Potpourri affects three champions for... Oh, look at that, 7.77. <laughs> and second bond, three champions for 7.77. Triple seven, two times. Lucky, lucky. Cool. Monkey Porter, you were in the kitchen making your coffee. Did you overhear that Ashara spec choice shows how many champions on the field fit? Yes. Or at least the first set does. I'm guessing it was an oversight that the second set doesn't show it, but I have poked them about it, so hopefully they will fix that. It's supposed to. <laughs> uh, some other champions show that as well. But I don't know exactly which ones, so look around. Actually, I can use some potion specialization real quick and spot check that. Uh, let's see. Freely. Freely's does not currently. Averin. Averin's also does not. Which is sad. I think it might be Xerophon. I think Xerophon might show it. I could check that. There he is. There they are correct myself there. Yeah, look at that. It does show it for Xerophon. Cool. Confirmed. Okay, so I've got familiars on leveling everyone. Put that on times 100, actually. And I've got my strong core. Not my strong, my modest core, but it is my strongest core. My most powerful core is my modest core. Now I need to check everyone's feats. Elemental Fire is good for now. Sure. Nope. I don't want the gold ones. I want Shadow Council. Yeah, give me Shadow Council. There we go. Baloth's fine. Drift's fine. Char is fine. Freely. I don't want Adventurous Tail. I want both of the Unlucky for Them abilities. There we go. Lucky for us and Auspicious Information. Pitch is fine, Old Cory is fine, Avern's fine. Okay, and so with that, go fast, big fire breath, big punch, big money. Not big healthy yet. 
because later I'm going to want to kill everyone off systematically to get Bailoth stacks. And having more health would make that process take longer. So that can wait. All right. So I'm just gonna let that keep running. They're doing fine now. And let's switch back to, let me go a little faster though. Let's switch back to my other game so that it's not as uh, <laughs> blinding with how many things are happening on the screen. Alright. Ah, uh, looks like we hit a wall. That's okay. We'll fix that up right quick. So we definitely have some things to spend here. I'm still gonna take Battlemaster for now. Arnelli still doesn't have any gear, and we have very low favor for her to get any health increases and such. Okay. Oh, I do have a regular silver chest I can open. There's no pressure to hold back on that. Yeah, duplicate gear. Great. <laughs> One day we'll reach the point where we have no more tutorial pop-ups, but today is not that day. All right, let's get through some more questions. Uh, Novus, oh yeah, uh, I did answer your question about splitting the party. You were you had to step away for dinner. That's okay. So you want to know a good choice for a slot one champion to pick up so that you can do split the party. Uh, Deacon, if you want speed. Or Kira, if you want power. That's pretty much what it comes down to. So, what do you need more? Speed or power? If you can answer that question, then you'll have your answer. Ella Makes Art. Just started playing a few days ago. Hey, good morning. Welcome to Idol Champions. Cheers. I hope you enjoy your time here. Apologies for not being high energy right now. I'm, um... A bit emotional, but I am here to do my job. Uh, normally, I would be a, a very, just a, a, a bundle of positive, joyous, overexcited energy. Not today. Dota 2, Norax. Question, how many Electrum Chests would you open for a new event hero before switching to Hero Silver Chests? I mean, if you want to be reckless like me, just open 50 Electrum Chests when you unlock a new character. And then start saving them up again. But if you're a newer player, just open like one at a time, honestly, until you get to at least full greens, if not full blues, for whichever character you're hunting gear for. Then switch over. XX Panda 25XX. <laughs> it's one of those like old school like Xbox Call of Duty type names. <laughs> Should I be spending gems on a second familiar, 5,000 gems, or on gold chests? 5,000 is pretty cheap as far as gem familiars go. But I think you'd be better served investing in chests. Basically, if you're early on enough that you need to be asking that question, you probably should stick with chests for now. I wouldn't really obsess with hunting familiars until you're at least all blue on your evergreen champions. And by evergreens, I mean non-event champions, such as these six right here. I'm working to unlock Kroll right now. That's an example of an event champion. These six right here would be examples of non-event and thus evergreen champions. Star Chaser question. Would you want to spend an episode sometime just doing silly or affiliation specific formations? Just asking. Absolutely. Yeah, I've got a daily show now. Twice on Wednesdays. It's a lot of content to fill. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely going to be times 
when I'm going to want to get weird with it, as I say. That's what makes the game fun to me. I don't have a, uh, a huge internal, like, need to be as powerful as possible. I'm just here to have fun. While knowing the game enough that, like, I can speak to, like, what's really powerful. I want to be able to clear all the content, of course, but it's refreshing to just get weird with it and have fun. So, yeah. I have before, and I will again, do some strange formations just for the heck of it. Maybe for uh, episode 100 we'll do some stuff. That's a week from today, by the way. One week from today is episode 100, and I promise to make it interesting. I have ideas, I have machinations in place. One thing I'll tease for you guys, uh, totally like disconnected from from C and E specifically here. Like I have a personal treasure trove of codes for giving stuff away that I have compiled over the years from just like my own things my own purchases or whatever or um, stuff that like other people, friends of the community have sent me like messaged me like hey Mars here's a code to give away to people. Cool thanks I'll add it to the pile. I'm going to give some stuff away all of next week. It's going to be a whole week of giveaways. Yeah, they are uh, one person, one use codes. So we'll probably do like giveaway style that way. I also need to see if it's possible for me to test codes without actually redeeming them. Because I want to make sure that they all work because they're very old. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I need to level people up. We're falling behind. See, I've got E08 gold, so I'm picking up all the E06 purchases. Now I'm going to get the E7s. And now I'll get the low E8s. There we go. Moving on. This crawl unlock's going to be easy compared to getting Yorvin. Yorvin was a hard fight because we had no favor, but now we have a little bit of favor. 716. That's enough to give us the edge that we need to get through stage 50 easily on this run. Uh, mean Keb, I missed Kron and Artemis joining the big meta. What's the skinny? <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anyone actually use, like, what's the skinny before. Except, like, in, I don't know film noir or detective novels. <laughs> so, uh, essentially, Krond and Artemis can be very good DPS if you are... <laughs> if your name is uh, Anime Hemo, then you have a very strong Krond, and if your name is Soldier, then you have an extremely strong Artemis. <laughs> Basically, there's a couple of members of our community who have invested... Uh, significantly would be an understatement into specifically Krond or Artemis, and by doing so, um, have made their preferred DPS into, uh, wow, um, killing machines. <laughs> but are they comparable DPS choices? for having the same, like, average item level as other DPSs? No, they, they are a little underperforming in that scenario. But if you have simply chosen to invest very heavily into a single DPS champion that is, like, your favorite, then there's at least a couple of success stories showing that that can definitely work. And I'm talking they have, like, tens of thousands of item levels in those characters. So, it's a lot. 
my Ashara on my main account is like 5,000. So half, half of what they've got going on on different characters. Uh, Tobarja, question. Addendum Strix, what does she like to make her work? You're asking how to work Strix DPS or Strix support or just understanding Strix's mechanics? Strix DPS. Okay. So if you are trying to do Strix DPS, she's a magic attacker, first of all. So it would be in your interest to use Olcoria in that formation. Uh, and otherwise, Strix is a chaotic good tiefling sorcerer. Um, you're giving up a lot of power by fielding Strix because you are choosing to not use Avrin. They share a slot, so you can't do that. Yeah, Okoria is what I said. Okoria is an evergreen champion that you can unlock by progressing far enough in the Waterdeep Dragon Heist permanent campaign. Get through the Waterdeep Dragon Heist campaign, get yourself an Okoria, uh, and include other magic attackers in your formation in order to make the most use of your Okoria. Just a moment. Okay, there we go. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. But, uh, let's see. Other things that would help with Strix DPS. You know, Orkira in slot 1 is probably going to be a big boost because that's a lot of healing. That's a lot, a lot of uh, support power. Plus, she's a magic attacker, so she would also count toward uh, Okoria's mechanics. Um, likewise, Donar in slot two. Hmm. Bailoth in slot four. Strix isn't really a complicated character to use. She doesn't, say, rely on specific characters to function. You can pretty much just use the best buffers in each slot, and then just make sure that you've got a good tank. Because she's good aligned, um, if you don't want to go the Olcoria route, you could use Tyrol in wild shape form as your tank because uh, Tyrol has a tanking buff that specifically buffs good aligned champions. Strix is good aligned, so that could work in your favor. Otherwise, good tanks for Strix. Well, there's always Briv. There's always Briv. It'd be very um, thematically appropriate to use Evelyn as a tank for a Strix DPS formation. Yeah, Strix is not complicated for setting up as a DPS. Ashara, my preferred DPS, is uh, much more complicated for working with because she relies on very specific choices. You have to be very deliberate with Ashara, very careful. Strix is easier. Uh, Monkey Porter, did, did they do the same with Human, Freely, etc.? Ah, for showing um, how many things apply for specializations. Um, Fumon, I don't think so. Freely, no. We just checked. I think it's supposed to affect Freely. I think you're supposed to see how many things qualify for Freely, but currently it does not. We got Zawan in chat saying not Hugh. Thanks for checking. Monkey Porter also asked, did you check Regis? Uh, I can do that real quick. Just a moment. I just checked. No. Regis is also not affected by this uh, specialization quality of life update. Horde Momo. Can we get familiar on gold cheese? What? 
<laughs> familiar on gold cheese. Uh, cheese as in exploits in gamer lingo. Like how you can cheese a Dark Souls boss. I'm not sure how you could cheese gold. Oh, <laughs> was that just a typo? Was that like an autocorrect typo thing and you meant to say gold chest? Can we get familiars in gold chests? Okay. <laughs> that really that really threw me for a loop there because I can I can usually autocorrect typos as I'm reading them, but cheese is itself a gamer term. So <laughs> that's where my head went first. Okay. Can you get familiars in gold chests? No, no you cannot. Sorry to say, you cannot get familiars in gold chests. I know, it'd, it'd be nice if you could. Maybe one day. It'd be cool if there was, like, one familiar, at least, out there that you had to hunt by opening chests. Because then it'd be, like, an exciting thing for people. Like, oh my god, I got the, I got the super rare familiar, ah! Maybe make it a one in a thousand, like shinies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest that actually. I think that could be very fun. I'm gonna write that down so I don't forget. One in a familiar. That's pretty good, Bunny Beast. The mimic familiar would be hilarious. That's really good. Familiar, very rare in chest mimic. Yeah, that could be really funny, honestly. Good thinking. But it would be better to make suggestions on Dev Insights, our Thursday show, because they're the ones who actually get to decide those things, not me. I just show off the game and talk about it. At the end of the day, I'm just a professional player. Uh, Coffinia, idea for Mars. I know you already do sometimes, but it would be cool to see you try out some of the more unpopular DPS uh, Cridal formations, for example, and see how it compares to how far you can usually go since they just buff Cridal, etc. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. Maybe we could make that um, a special or something. I said day one of doing this as a daily morning show, this is going to evolve over time. The core of Guiding Hand is that we show off the new content, discuss strategies, and answer questions about the game. But I don't see any reason why we can't add to that list. I like the idea of doing segments. I like the idea of doing requests. I love the idea of audience interaction in general. Because otherwise, just be a YouTube video or something, right? <laughs> I could just do a local recording and not be live. But interaction with the chat, that's what makes Twitch streams special. That's what makes live streaming special. So very much interested in any of those things. Um, all right. I'm going to write down request, get weird with it, and I will know what that means. I talked about that earlier. So maybe I can uh, incorporate that into things. Maybe as we go into 2022, I can make some plans for things ahead of time. Yeah. Thanks for the idea, Coffinia. Aristodemi. Aristodeme. Sure. 
I can't find it on the wiki, but is there a way of seeing heroes you can get through the campaign? No, there really should be. It's something I suggested a long time ago now, like two years ago or something. I made a suggestion before I actually came to work for CNE, so maybe I should bring it up again. Write that down too. Um, see evergreens on map. An idea that I had years ago was like, what if right here on the map screen we had little um, portrait icons? Like maybe a portrait of Dritzt next to the Grand Tour of the Sword Coast, a portrait of Azaka and Dragonbait next to Tomb of Annihilation to show like, hey, play these campaigns to unlock these characters. And as you unlock them, the portraits vanish so that you know you've already gotten them. I would love that. I think that would uh, make it less of like a secret surprise to players. So that they would know, like, hey, you really like Dritzt? Is that a big reason why you came to this game? Because you like Dritzt to Orden? Okay. Here's where you can get Dritzt in the game. So that you'll stick around and actually do that. So currently, no. You'd have to actually know what adventure that they're in. Or just click on looking at all of them until you find the one that they're in. And see, like, ah, I get them by beating this one. Aha, okay. But oh, that's tedious. Fell down. So I have read and hear people talk about Evergreen Champions. What are those? Evergreen Champions are non-event champions. So these are champions that you start the game with. Example, Brunor, Celeste, Maeli, Jarlaxle, Calliope, Ashara, Minsk, not Hitch, Delana. Those are examples of Evergreen Champions. Specifically, these are your core Evergreen Champions, or just your core Champions. Evergreens are also Champions that you unlock, but not through events, such as Hitch. You get Hitch by signing up for the newsletter. The counterpart to Evergreen Champions are Event Champions. Event Champions are these guys. Kroll is an event champion, Lucius is an event champion, Jorvan's an event champion, and how do we know that? Because you unlock them by playing an event, Simril. So you've got evergreens and you've got events. Those are the two categories. Evergreens are then, uh, there's a subcategory of the core champions. But yeah, it's pretty simple actually. Ken Revib, question, how does one beat unhittable Irina and her regenerating minions? In Guests of the Groom. Ah, uh, boy. Um. Stuns. Debuffs. Things that uh, make people take more damage. Uh, things that stop enemies from attacking. You could try putting the enemies behind Grama's wall. There's a few things you could do. I can't jump into it and show you right now. But, uh, Irina and her regenerating minions isn't, um, the most frightening danger of that little storyline. That would be, uh, regenerating Strahd. That's when knockback stuns and walls really pay off. You just gotta keep them from the away from the formation as much as you can. Jamek unyielding. How's the crawl deep push? Uh, looking back at it, which we can do. Just a second. Full screen. Specific window. There you go. So the crawl deep push is coming up on 4:55 right now. Going strong. Not slowing down whatsoever. Sitting on a, a about E196, E197 bud when it comes up. 
so yeah, this is going. Uh, this isn't really going to get interesting until about 700, so I'm just going to keep letting that ride for now. There we go. Well, I get to 1200. Doubtful. Doubtful. Maybe, but doubtful. My highest ever is like 1180. So I'd have to beat my all-time record by 20 to do that. So don't see it happening. But perhaps. Gosh, I'll actually still my best DPS here. Okay. If you say so, game. Rio Madness. Does Strix's Haunted add account if Baloth revives with Jin? That's an interaction I haven't tested. I could try. I could, uh, I could sabotage my Crawl Deep Push temporarily to test it myself. I see people in chat saying that no, it does not. I would assume that that would be the case, that it is not. Oh, hey, cool. We beat it. Great. We picked up 130 favor there. Okay, awesome. Uh, now I gotta decide if I let this push or if I go ahead and reset and then go for Lucius. I'm gonna reset and go for Lucius. But let's get to like 284 favor first so I can get that to a nice clean 1000 if I can before I actually reset. We're in 135 so we can let this go for a bit longer. Oh, besides, I get to uh, pick up Jarlaxle's specialization in just a moment. There we are. More gold find to haul. That'll make that easier to accrue now. Excellent. Yeah, I would assume that Strix's Haunted does not interact with Baloth's Jin Revival in that way. Teeny Human, hey chat, it's my birthday today. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited to be spending it with Mars today. Thanks for everything you do, Mars. Best birthday gift ever. Oh, hey, thank you. Uh, my birthday is tomorrow, in fact, and that is the time of the year that I get very, very emotional in not the good way. Most of the time I try not to think about my birthday. Um, but I appreciate you saying that, teeny human. I hope that it's a good day for you today. You know, despite my own feelings. Or maybe even in spite of my own feelings. Because <laughs> spite can take you very far in life. Um, I hope it's a good day for you. I'm glad that you're enjoying your time with us, even if I'm not in the best of spirits myself. Ha ha hi ho ha ha. Okay. That's a name. That's someone's name. I wasn't just randomly laughing weird. Hey Mars, what's CNE's opinion on click debuff and scripting? I don't know if there's an official, like, judgment on how Codename Entertainment feels as a company overall about click debuff. Um, they clearly tolerate it, at least, because they haven't immediately quashed it. Um, the official stance on scripting is and has been for a while that Codename Entertainment um, does not officially condemn nor condone scripting. So if that's something that you choose to do to play your game, all right. Um, I feel like that kind of, I don't know, undermines the game experience, but my opinion doesn't matter 
because at the end of the day, it's a non-competitive game. As long as what you are doing is not impacting other people's enjoyment of the game, then I think you're fine. Click debuff is not for me. It's just not my bag. It feels like too much of an exploit. It feels like it's cheating or playing the game as it's not meant to be played. It just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I don't like the idea of the click debuff strategy. And I don't like the idea of scripting. But that's just my opinion. And not an official stance. Half B, question. Do you think there will be a hidden code list for 2022? I mean, probably. That's one of my favorite things that the, the community engages in. If you don't know about this, we have um, hidden codes. I think Dylan is the one that comes up with them, so he's probably the best person to ask. But I could probably ask for you. Um, <laughs> each year, I think we started like two years ago, maybe three years ago. Each year we um, have had these, like a, a list of secret codes it doesn't say like it doesn't say what the code is people have to guess them sometimes we'll give out hints and others are just a total mystery and people just have to just guess but each year the community has managed to hive mind brain tank figure it out it's pretty cool I like it. It feels like a scavenger hunt, basically. So, maybe? Oh, you know what? Dylan is out of office today. I can't even ask him. But I can make a note to ask him on, like, Monday. Alright, I made a note. Ed Ladd, is there already a Mimic Familiar? I think it was the year one anniversary giveaway. Yeah, there is. But who's to say we couldn't have another one? Um, <laughs> because that... Can't really show it here on this account, I think. Oh, no, I can. Um, yeah, so here's an Almirage, right? Here's another one. A specific Almirage. Yeah. Um, there are other examples of this. Oh, there's Griff. Uh, Griff is an owl, and I don't think you can see it here, but I know there's also a barn owl familiar, so there's two owls. Like, there are, oh gosh, and then there's Fancy Red Panda and Cinnamon, who is a red panda. There are multiple examples of doubling up on familiars. Who's to say we can't do that for Mimics? Maybe even uh, the <laughs> the Mimic gibbering Malder from Sketching Hour, Martin says. Yeah, that could be fun. Sketching Hour comes up with the best stuff, y'all. I love that show. That's a fantastic show. It's so much fun. The more Sketching Hour creatures make it into the game, the better, I think. I mean, it, it feels like Sketching Hour is just a familiar factory. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we are barely scratching this boy. Oof. We might have to call it here for this run. I said we'd be able to get past 50 easily. I didn't say anything about 55. Yeesh. No. 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 Yeah, Minsk is the best here. Okay. If you say so, game. Oh, we're gonna use my ultimates. It's just that, like, my ultimates are gonna barely affect him. They're gonna do E15. And he's sitting on E17 health. That's like 
It's like single percentages. Look at that. It's like nothing. Boop, boop, boop. Here, I'll go ahead and use them. That's all but Asharas. And here's Asharas with a seven minute cooldown. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, so let's go ahead and end this one. That's fine. Saint Adventurer, what's up? Cool. Okay, and now we will jump into the Lucius unlock, just so we can get this boy and move on with our lives. There we go. This is going to be a much more difficult formation to design. That Kroll formation is much better for doing a deep push. Speaking of, my main account deep push for Kroll is on 568 and still not slowing down. So we'll check back up on on that again. Devour the world at the end of days. Waffle's offspring is called Cinnamon, so if that ever becomes familiar, we'll have two familiars of that name. Cinnamon's in the game. Um, Waffle's offspring Cinnamon. If you use Ascendant Strix and you use Strix's ultimate, and one of the three random effects that it pulls, you pull uh, Waffle, like you summon Waffle the Owlbear. Uh, Waffle the Owlbear will appear. Waffles the Owlbear will appear with Cinnamon. Because it's Ascendant Waffles as well as Ascendant Strix. I think uh, Holly uh, posted that on Twitter. That's how I learned about that. Libnock, they should drop pieces of familiars to build a familiar. Well, that's horrifying to think about. <laughs> the only way that that is not incredibly disturbing is if it's a construct. <laughs> Yeesh. I don't hate the idea um, conceptually, but it's got to be got to be a construct of some kind. Yeah, homunculus or something. A yeah, clockwork, something like that. Jamek Unyielding Mars, how does one become an Idle Champs pro player like yourself? Oh, Lord. Um, B, obsessive. B, E, obsessive. Yeah. Um, 21,000 hours on my main account. Probably 1,000 hours combined or more on my other accounts over the course of four years and several months. Yeah, I told the story earlier this week. <laughs> so if you want the whole story, you can check out um, recent episodes from this week. Um, but basically, I, I, I got into the game extremely early, like a week after it had come out. And I've been here every day ever since and just made a very strong presence for myself in the community. And admittedly, annoyed the devs, I did. Um, like a whiny child always asking for things, like, hey, can I get this art asset so I can make a resource? I can see now in hindsight that I was bugging them and asking for too much, but Somehow, I managed to walk that very fine line and landed with uh, making Idle Champions my actual job. <laughs> Jeez, you won't go away. Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Yeah, Eric, really, was uh, the one who gave me all these opportunities and brought me on board. So thank you, Eric. And thank you to all of Codename for welcoming me into the family, so to speak. Um, have a talent, know what you're doing, and prove it. Prove that this is something you want by dedicating yourself to it. This is not something that I just like woke up one day and was like, mm, I want to, I want to, I want to actually get paid to play Idle Champions and stream it. 
It's something I worked at for a long, long time. Baradina F. Hi, Mars. Sorry to hear you're not feeling your best today. Thank you. Hope tomorrow feels a bit better again. My serotonin-deprived brain is definitely happy you're here, so thanks. Good. Good. Um, I'll be all right. It's just another day. It's just that. I guess seasonal affective stuff, right? It hits me hardest at and around my birthday. I, th I thought I could handle it this year. I was doing fine until like the dead middle of the night last night. And then it just boom hit me. But I'm not going to shy away from talking about it because mental health should be discussed more openly in a productive way, however. So, yes, I am very affected right now, and um, it's really messing with my head. But I can still help people. I can still uh, give to the community. And that helps me, I think. Thank you for your well wishes. Here's the fun thing about Brunor. Brunor buffs the same column, even if they are extremely far apart. Even if there's no spaces between them, Brunor will still buff the same column. So this formation works, even though it doesn't look like it should to the untrained eye. Nine while nine, Mars, question, follow up, or in the zone? Not sure what that's referring to. Nine while nine, maybe you could clarify. Ye Serenite, hi boys. <laughs> I'm sure there's ladies and non-binary folks here too. But okay. <laughs> um, how can I make Yorvin kill 20 enemies with one hit? Um, build a Yorvin DPS formation. Oh, I know what nine was talking about now. Yeah, I'll get back to you in a second, nine. Um, build a Yorvin DPS formation, you Serenite. And get to a stage where only Yorvin is killing everything. Then take Yorvin out of your formation and let 20 enemies or more build up on attacking your tank. Then put Yorvin back into the formation and prepare for a bloodbath. <laughs> yeah, as Yorvin slaughters them all. Uh... But 9 while 9, you were asking follow up or in the zone. That's a spec choice for Cadibri. It took me a, a minute to think about that. I always go with the left one. Which one is that? Let me level up Cadibri. That's follow up. I always go with follow up. But it's been so long now, I don't remember why. And I'm sure it, it matters if you're going uh, support or DPS for Caddy Bree, because she can do both. She can be a DPS character. Oh, oh, Martin. Okay. <laughs> Martin thinks that Yser and I when they said hi boys they meant me and martin because we are boys okay <laughs> gotcha gotcha okay well hello <laughs> thank you martin for um demystifying that for me yeah oh we got valeo mock saying in the zone is best right spec mm. maelstrom's also saying caddy is best in right spec and gecko said gaming right one is reducing attack cooldown after a crit you know, it's funny because I <laughs> I remember always choosing right spec for Cadibri when she came out and then hearing that, no, no, left spec is best. And so then I switched to left spec and then hearing right spec is best. So I switched to right spec and then left again. And now I'm hearing right again. <laughs> so that is amusing. Um, Maybe that's something that changes with the tide. I don't know. But 
I will try using Caddybury right spec and see how that goes. Yeah, this is not going to be a very pretty deep, uh, very pretty formation by the end of this. Zasuke, question, what would be the best legendary stat for Ashara? Mm, we can get my uh, legendary forge in my main account. This is in the background. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'd imagine it's just the one with the highest number. Increase the damage of all champions with a wisdom score of 13 or higher by 150%. Yeah, and then just leveling that one up. Or increase the damage of all Aarakocra champions by 150%. So those are both 150%, so that seems like a tie. Yeah, I think it just comes down to a raw number check. But you can also just, you'll get all six effects if you legendary all of Ashara's equipment. So you're not going to miss out on any. Jester Josh, what's the story behind this song? Ah, thank you, Martin, for noting that this was asked while Won't You Be My Friend was the song that was playing. Uh, so the song that you were listening to at the time, Jester Josh, and you know what? Gonna skip to it. Just a second. Just a moment. Nope. 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 There it is. I had to go through a lot there. <laughs> All right. So you're now listening to "Won't You Be My Friend." Yeah, Martin's doing a great job today. Thank you, buddy. Um, "Won't You Be My Friend" is Penelope's song. Penelope is an adorable halfling druid in slot twelve. So swaps with Archon, Neris, Zorbu, Melf, Selyse, Azaka. Uh, and she wants to be everyone's friend. She is this pint-sized beacon of positivity wrapped up in a flowering shrub. Like she wears a, a shrub around her body. <laughs> Like, a, like the plant, like a bush. <laughs> it's very cute. She wants to be everyone's friend, so this is her song, Won't You Be My Friend. The non-instrumental version that is in the Bardic Inspiration Volume 2 is even... Um, uh, it is sung by Hope Lavelle, who is the creator and player of the character Penelope. So you're hearing it, in the voice of the character. Like Penelope herself is singing Penelope's own song. It's really smart that they did that. I love that they did that. It's very cool. Uh, <laughs> Wrathchild has a comment on Penelope. Briv skips a couple of levels. Penelope skips every level. <laughs> yeah. That's referring to... Penelope's walking animation is skipping. She actually skips when she walks. It's so adorable. Coffinia, hmm. I'm doing Raven Swarm in the moment, but I'm getting no ravens. Like, at all, at any level. That has to be a bug. Anyone else? Martin's also getting this issue. Really? Huh. Well, that's strange. File a, file a bug report, submit a ticket for that one. I played the Raven Swarm variant on my show, and it was working perfectly fine. So, submit a ticket. That's weird. If you don't know how to do that, bottom right, there's a question mark button. Click on that. Support will open a new browser tab. Click OK. And then fill out the information in all the relevant fields to submit a bug report. And Sean and or Taylor will get back to you as soon as they can. <laughs> Sean was out sick yesterday, I believe, but he should be in today. Oh yeah, because he even responded to a question I asked. 
the Fragile. Recommended champions for slots two and five to unlock through time gates so I can get to split the party. Okay, sure. Um, I will also switch back to my main account to talk about that. I like when people ask me for recommendations. That's fun. So recommended champions for slots two and five. All right. In slot two, Whittle for speed, Donar for power. Uh, also want to make a, a special shout out to Korth and Talon, who are my favorite characters in slot two. Um, Talon is really good, but only if you're using a good or if you're using like a lot of good or a lot of evil characters. If you're using a lot of neutrals, like I'm an Ashara DPS main, she's neutral. Talon doesn't do me any favors, which is sad. Um, I hope that my next meta DPS of choice will be a good or evil champion so that I can use Talon more, because I really like Talon. Uh, Korth um, deserves special mention because he is a lizard folk samurai whose name means danger. That's got to be my favorite character concept in the game. Like, it's, it sounds so stupid on paper, but they executed it so well. <laughs> I love Korth. He's so cool. Samurai lizard man named Danger. It's incredible. No, Danger Danger's not his middle name. He just has the one name. So if you look in the Ghosts of Salt Marsh 5th edition D&D book, under uh, all the information on lizard folk civilization, they have a name table for lizard folk. For just like, if you just need a, a generic lizard folk name, here's a table with several of them. One of them is Korth, K O R T H, spelled exactly like this. And the meaning of Korth, written right next to it, is danger. <laughs> so that's amazing. <laughs> wizard folk stabbing a mage that's a wizard poke lizard folk eating eggs in the cold that's a blizzard yoke bardic inspiration love that show uh, and slot 5 you also wanted a recommendation for slot 5 the fragile so the fragile if you want speed go briv if you want one of the best healers in the game while also being a strong support go kilek if you want an amusing dps go prudence um but worth noting kilek very good healer briv also a very good healer while also being a very good tank, while also being a very good support, while also being, arguably, the best speed champion in the game. So, really Briv. Really strongly recommend Briv, very much. Uh, Fennec, question. I wondered, as a new player without familiars, is there a rule which distractions drop how much gold? I also felt the faster ones drop more, but never could prove it. I don't know if that's ever been proven either, but that has uh, strongly been my feeling as well. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the devs have ever commented on it, as far as I'm aware. Um, <laughs> but it has long been my suspicion that the faster distractions and the harder to click ones give more gold than the others. At the end of the day, it's a pittance compared to how much gold you get by just killing enemies. But it's fun, and distractions also matter way more when you're a newer player as opposed to a later game player. Monkey Porter, do old familiars like the year one anniversary ever become attainable again? Uh, yes, but you might not like the answer. They will randomly be presented as... Uh, an offering in your wild offers. That's it. 
So, like, if I switch back to... If I switch... If I switch back... If I switch back to my new game... Right over here... Right. So, here's a bunch of familiars. I'm guessing these are all familiars that I could acquire in the game right now, the ones that are not retired. There are 70 familiars total, I believe. And these are all the familiars that I could get right now, whether it's gems or real money purchases. And then right up here, I have a wild offer, which includes a hedgehog familiar. That's a retired familiar. That hedgehog is not on this list. So yeah, that's how you can get retired familiars. They will randomly show up in your wild offers. Ugh, oh no. I'm gonna have to mess with this formation here. Oh, they need levels, that's what they need. Okay, we should be fine now. We should be fine now. What was I even worried about? Jester Josh, what's the better second spec for Averin? Sturdy or empowered mirrors? Um, left, 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 left. You always choose left for Averin second specialization. It's the one that makes those mirrors last longer. It's the one that makes them go from like 30 seconds to 60 seconds. I think that's sturdy. I can check the name of it myself real quick. Yeah, it's sturdy. Always take sturdy for the second specialization. You're welcome. Cobrain Matter, what's the new Kroll DLC? Yeah, so it, it's not, actually. I don't know why this is happening. It's trying to advertise the Champions of Renown Year 3 All-Star Pack. I, I guess it's just because it's on sale right now, which I wasn't aware was happening. I didn't know we were putting this on sale. Um, but it's definitely not new because I've had this skin on my main account for a while now. But it is a very good deal. These Champions of Renown packs, especially if you can get them on sale, are an extremely good deal. I mean, Kroll is one of the best uh, debuffers in the game. Melf is a good speed champion. Avalar is a very good speed champion, specifically for mad wizard farming and just going anywhere in Baldur's Gate Ascend to Avernus. Uh, Averin is one of the... Averin is arguably the best buffer in the entire game. And you get 10 shinies, 16 chests for each of the characters. It's a really good pack. Really good. Yeah, apparently that's epic only, people are saying in chat. Hmm, okay. Yeah, that happens. Sometimes uh, sales are not equal on all platforms. Elramon, question Ayla, never know which of her specializations to choose. Which is best? Uh, I always go the left one for her. Which is... Let me just grab her and level her up real quick. Uh, yeah, Stormcaller. I always go Stormcaller on her, reducing the cooldown of her Storm Aura by two seconds. Just so that her Storm Aura is applying more often. Like, I don't have to wait around as much for it to come into effect. Reaver, question. Have you unlocked the Monty Python Killer Rabbit from the current event <laughs> on your new account yet? Um... Have I unlocked the Monty Python Killer Rabbit? Oh, the variant for Yorvin? So if I go back here to the map... I believe they're talking about this Fangclaw. In each boss area, a vicious rabbit boss enemy appears. It must also be defeated in order to progress. Gold finds reduced by 90%. Only champions with dexterity before training hard can be used. I have this available for me to play, but I have not even tried it yet, because I'm just um, trying to beat all the unlocks first. 
Or do you mean unlocking Jorvan, the character? Because I have unlocked Jorvan. I've also unlocked Kroll. Right now I'm working on unlocking Lucius. So I do have this killer rabbit, if that's what you meant. Yeah, oh yeah, Jorvan in general, killer rabbit, yes. Yeah, what is it, the, the Beast of Karnanog or something like that? I forget how it's referred to. Last time I watched Monty Python was like, or uh, Holy Grail specifically, was like 10 years ago. Gavarn, uh, question, does the Tier 3 global perk... Oh, I actually got it right? <laughs> Thanks, Reaver. Does the Tier 3 global perk, plus damage for neutral characters, work on both alignment axes? Uh, the question is... Uh, oh, from Mert. Mmm. No. That's referring to specifically neutral on the... Uh, good and evil axis. I don't believe that's uh, both types of neutral. It really would be nice if we had different words for them. But we don't, because D&D &D doesn't. Pen layer, and this catches up, so if you have more questions for me, I am completely caught up after this one. Pen layer, question, is Briv worth it as a buffer before he is tanked a lot in the adventure? Um, yes, he's still worth it. Remember also that he does build up his buff by tanking, so they're not just he's not just going to magically have his tanking stacks. You have to use him to make him have those stacks. Is he still worth using even without the stacks? Yes. But also, the second that you decide to use him, that he does start tanking, he will start gaining those stacks. So you should anyway. Kerbit asking, where's the chest? I believe I saw you asking about this earlier, Kerbit, and I think folks tried to explain, but I'll, I'll explain for you. I know sometimes it can be uh, confusing for newer players. Um, there isn't, like, some kind of a tutorial in the game that shows how to do this. So, okay. Watch. Um, first, up here, there's a chest button. Click on that. And then you can either click on this box over here, or you can click on this button that says unlock a lock chest. Either one will get you to this. This is called the Cryptex. Once you're on this, you can spin this wheel by left click and dragging or punching these buttons. You can also just type and it will go directly into it. Copy and paste also works. The code for my show today is right above my head. On my show, it's always right above my head. This is my code for today. It's Friday as well. So I'm just going to type Friday as well. See, and it's right there. And now I'm going to click on the unlock button. And just like that, one free Electrum chest. Easy. I hope that helps, Kerbit. We do have a VOD for it. We, <laughs> um, Yeah, Martin linked it just above your comment there, Dananer. Uh, exclamation mark, how code. H-O-W-C-O-D-E, how code. Exclamation mark, how code. We'll give you a link from Nightbot. For, it's either me or Gar, I forget which one of us, explaining how to redeem a chest code. Oh yeah, and then we also have a, the speed command for how am I going so fast? Mm, human. Until I have more characters to pick from, I'm gonna go human. Oh, you know what? Crawl. Although, that's a... I need E10 to get his first upgrade? Yikes! I need to wait a while. Cyclops Elder, you've gotten 11 gold crawl chests in a row, no silvers? My god. That's incredible luck. Yeah, the code is right above my head. It says Friday as well. It's right there. 
Jester Josh 42, would you replace neutral on the good evil axis or the lawful chaotic axis? Whew! This is getting into like some uh, <laughs> uh, moral philosophy here. Uh, honestly, if it were up to me, I'd throw out the whole system. I throw out the entire alignment system. I can see how it's convenient, but like, eh. I studied philosophy and religion in college extensively. That was my major. I just don't feel like it's right to pigeonhole every possible moral and ethical profile into nine convenient boxes. That feels wrong to me. So, <laughs> I would throw out the entire system. One of the things that I did in one of my campaigns that went very well, because I, I also played d and I haven't in a while now. Um, well, no, there was Extra Life. I shouldn't discount that. Extra Life was a blast. I played several games. But I haven't played with a consistent group in a while. But one of my favorite alternatives to alignment that I did in a campaign was um, I used ideals. And this is before 5th edition was a thing. Because ideals are a thing now, but it's just part of like your character flavor and not actually your alignment. But I replaced the alignment system with a system that I called ideals. Which was that you, when making your character, you chose three things to which you were bonded, that you were utterly devoted to, and that those three things uh, were in order of, like, most devotion, second most devotion, third most devotion. And it worked fine. What really made it fun is when a character was put into a situation where their devotions, their ideals came into conflict. Like, maybe they were devoted to a specific cause, and they were also devoted to a specific person, and then suddenly that person is against their cause. So now they're an enemy, and they've got to make that moral dilemma choice of, like, oh god, do I fight my friend or not? And that these ideals could change and evolve over time. But it, it made for some really interesting character moments. Ah, first silver crawl. See, you shouldn't have bragged about it. <laughs> shouldn't have bragged about it, Cyclops Elder. Is Cyclops Elder Neo in disguise? <laughs> well, that depends. Cyclops Elder, do you know Kung Fu? I know Kung Fu. Can you do bullet time? <laughs> Hack the Matrix. Uh, Cyclops Elder also has a question. Characters that are just neutral, where do they fall on both axes? Is that like neutral, neutral? You got it in one. That is correct, actually. If a character's alignment simply says neutral, then it means they are neutral on the good evil axis and they are neutral on the lawful chaotic axis. Whoa, whoa, closed captioning did what? Ah. Uh. Hmm. See, I have a profanity filter turned on, but I can also add things to the filter, I believe. So, um, hey, y'all. If you catch some bad stuff happening in captions, please let me know, and I will try to add it to my profanity filter. I don't want that. Yeesh. Anyway, moving on. Chris first Kale. When are you going to do a bonus stream pontificating on alternative alignment systems with the community? Well. <laughs> Streaming is literally my job now. So I think that's up to C and E actually. Um, I love streaming. 
and I do it all day. Well, I do it every day now, but I would also do it all day if they wanted me to, with breaks, of course. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, if they wanted me to just talk about D&D, then I would do it. But they have better people for that. We have uh, much bigger names in the D&D community working with Codename Entertainment. They would be much better candidates for something like that, I think. I would enjoy it, but they deserve it more. Uh, Dark Van Juan, wait, what new event? This one, this is Simril. The Simril event is live as of two days ago. We have the return of Kroll, the return of Lucius, and the debut of Jorvan, the Killer Rabbit. It's actually a really cool character. <laughs> Jorvan's very interesting because he goes on a killing streak. <laughs> yeah, Jorvan DPS can be really amusing. Um, by the way, the Kroll free play deep push is coming up on 900. It's uh, 882 right now. Looks like they're going to 900 easily. Al Siric, who is your favorite champion? Changes every day. Um, hmm. I mean, with 92 characters in the game, you know, it usually ends up being that my favorite champion is the most recently released one. So, yeah, currently it's Jorvan, because it's it's exciting, like, how can I not be excited over the new hotness, you know? It's the brand new one, the brand new character, which means, like, the most potential for chaos. Chaos is fun. <laughs> so that does appeal to me. So yeah, I would say, uh, I would say Jorvan right now, but it'll, that will change in however many weeks, two, three weeks, whatever, till we get the, the next character. Outside of the newest one, some characters that I just really strongly like. Um, I will always have a spot in my heart for Farida in slot seven. Frida is a, a tiefling in slot 7, and she was made by Aaron M. Evans, who you may know from Champions of Lore. She's one of the, the co-hosts on Champions of Lore. Um, Frida is basically the kind of character that I would make. But there are other characters like that as well. Um, Melf is absolutely the sort of character that I would make. Now I'm just looking at the at the whole list. Um, Warden is super cool. I feel like as time goes on, I enjoy the concept of Warden more and more. So shout out to Dylan, because Warden really is an awesome character. Uh, <laughs> I feel like Warden and Jorvan would at least get along in their mutual love of violence. <laughs> um, hmm. As far as, like, using champions, I really like using Ayla. One of my favorite champions to just use, because even though she doesn't make it into my Ashara DPS formations, Ayla's one of those champions that I can always depend on. Like, I need a tank with a lot of survivability, and I need to have that tank not care about what DPS I'm using or where they're positioned. Who can I use for that? Ayla. Ayla's a good choice for that. From the heroes of Aurelis! Yeah, Ayla's a, Ayla's a, a really great tank support debuffer for that. Uh, I have to ask, what's your favorite Bardic Inspiration song today? Says Martin. Um... 
It's probably Won't You Be My Friend, just because I had to talk about it earlier, and so it's just playing on loop in my brain right now. <laughs> Firedale 2002, do you have any off time to stream your own stuff, or do you only stream for C&E? Alright, Firedale. Back in August, I decided, you know what? I love streaming. I have streamed on my own channel many times in the past. But I'm going to make an honest go at rising up as a streamer on my own channel. I'm going to stream, like, every day. I'm going to have a schedule. I'm going to tell people ahead of time. I'm going to, like, announce stuff on social media. And I really went for it. And I think it went really well. Like, I ended up with over a 1,000 followers on my, on my own Twitch channel. Which enabled me to get an Epic Creator Code so that I could get kickbacks from people purchasing things on the Epic Store, which is cool. Uh, but life happened, as life often does. Um, I got busy traveling, essentially. Um, and ultimately, now, I've landed on streaming as my full-time job for Codename Entertainment. So... <laughs> Um, by the time I get off of work streaming my show and producing other shows I am too tired to stream so there goes my, my daily streaming on my own channel and any of those schedules and plans and such it's, it's exhausting if you've never streamed before it takes a lot out of you actually it's, it's a lot of uh, mental energy that you're putting out in the world so, especially me, because I, I tend to be very, like, like, high energy for a streamer. So if I stream again, it'd probably be on weekends, or if I have time off of work. Maybe I can at least do a Saturday or Sunday thing in 2022, but... It's definitely not going to be every day anymore. But if you're curious and you want to check out, like, my own VODs, you can always go to twitch.tv slash StorytellerMars after this show. Not right now. <laughs> be nice. Hang out. Come on. Don't leave. Don't leave. But, yeah, I, um, I save every stream I've ever done. It all goes up as VODs that you can watch whenever you want. I did a full playthrough of Tales of Arise, which just won... Uh, I think it, it won RPG of the Year at the Video Game Awards. It's really heckin' good. It's a great video game. I did a full 100% playthrough of Tales of Arise and streamed that entire thing and saved the highlights, so check that out. I also did Idle Champions. And I also did, um... Once Upon a Time, I did a reading like public domain literature and poetry and it was super fun and wood burning my quarantine hobby has been learning the art of wood burning also called pyrography and I streamed sessions of that as well and really enjoyed it so you can check that out Firedale what games do you play in your downtime um Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been getting more into that with the 2.0 update. Just like a little bit here and there. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I picked that up as well. But I i haven't even beaten the, the third gym leader yet, so I've barely made any progress there at all. Just kill all the little ones, please, Minsk. Please. Please, Mr. Minsk. Can you just kill all the little ones? I might have to farm a tiny bit before we can actually beat this. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. 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 I don't like our prospects right here. <laughs> Loki asks, will you stream your D&D &D campaign then? I'd love to. If the stars align. Level my clicker, it's not going to matter. There, 22 levels. Still nothing. Still does nothing. 
you pretty much need your click level, your spell damage, to be equal to the level that you're at in the adventure for it to matter. For events, it can be a tiny bit under, but yeah, 36 click damage versus stage 50 is going to do nothing. Yeah, we need to farm for a little. So we're going to go back. Darfan1, uh, no, when you're talking about getting familiar and mention a new event at the same time, mm, I don't remember talking about that. Sorry. Um, but the current event is Simril. And there will be an event after that. And an event after that. And an event after that. Because that's how it works. It's a yearly rotation of 17 events. Dance Lover JG. Dance Lover. It's my first event. Hey, nice. Welcome to Idol Champions. Good luck. Have fun with it. So you had none of the characters. Should I do roughly the same amount of free plays for all, or should I, as soon as all cost the max, focus on one? Mm. I'm glad you included that, that caveat there, as soon as they all cost the max. Yeah, once they all cost the max, um, try to get all of them to at least blue gear, all blue rare gear. But if you want just one to focus on for really farming item levels and trying to score epics for them. I would say it's Kroll or Jorvin right now. I'm still not sure about, like, if Jorvin is overall better than Kroll. It's not really fair to compare them anyway because they serve completely different functions. Um, but it's definitely not Lucius. It's definitely not Lucius. Elrimon7, question... What is Mars, your D&D &D character? Species, class, fun details. How do we help get them on a stream? Oh, well, thank you. Um, my character of Mars, as Kleiner Marsire, uh, is a half-elf, cleric, arcana domain, of the goddess Mistra, the goddess of magic and mysteries. Um, I've also been playing with the idea of making him a warlock of Averin. <laughs> and maybe dipping into Bard. But at his core, he's an Arcana Domain Cleric of Mistra. And I even have, like, art of the character. Multiple pieces of art of the character at this point. Um, neutral good with chaotic moments. <laughs> Fun details... Uh, Mars is a character that I have had in multiple things, and I first came up with him in 2008. Mars is a character I first concepted in 2008 when I was just starting college, and I played Mars in a year and a half long campaign. So. The character of Mars that I uh, talk about in the community is just kind of the latest incarnation of the concept of the character. They are functionally different people, but at its core is like the same sort of character, the same attitude, the same um, predilections. How do you get them onto a stream? <laughs> uh, ask people, I guess. I don't know, it's weird because I'm not... <laughs> it feels wrong to say, like, go bother people about it. Don't do that. Respect people's time. Don't be annoying to the devs or anything, asking them to do special favors for me. I'm lucky enough that I'm here in the first place. But it would be a dream of mine to finally get my own character into the game. Something I've wanted for years now. It'd be nice if it ever happens. Uh, but how do you get them onto a stream? Well, we have done that. It's been a while, but four times we've had a Storyteller Mars Presents D&D game. You know what? I'm going to switch to my main game since nothing is happening here. We're just farming. There we go. This is more interesting. We're on 950 now, 954 and moving forward. I've got 10 minutes to burn. So let's do this. There we go. All right, yeah, buckle up. It's gonna get fast and uh, choppy waters here. 
Um, but we've had Storyteller Mars presents D&D games on the channel four times now. The first one was called Twice in a Blue Moon. Um, my players are Garawar, Trevor, um, Trevor's um, partner in crime, Ali, from uh, their Difficulty Class podcast, um, Lee, our own pancake guy on Griddle Champions, which is later today, by the way. Uh, he played a character called Watt. If you if you really want to make Lee smile today on Griddle Champions, ask Lee to talk about Watt-221B. I think that would make him very happy. Um, but we also had Robo Goblin, a.k.a. TTRPG GIFs, guest on the show before, and that was really nice. That is correct, Firedale. That is correct. It's a Sherlock Holmes reference. The character is itself a Sherlock Holmes reference. Yeah. That would make Lee smile, I think, to ask about what. Um, but I hosted those games. They were adventures that I ran myself. I wrote and ran myself, and people seemed to like it. And it was, um, each of them is a one-shot, but it's also an ongoing storyline. But it's been months since the last one, and there's no talks currently of it coming back. It'd be nice if it did, but I'm not holding out hope for it. But if you want to see those streams, they are available. Just get on YouTube and search Storyteller Mars Presents. And you'll find... I think the videos are hosted on Garwar's YouTube channel. You can find them there. They're definitely not on the CNE channel. Mr. Moss Chops, question. Hey Mars, what strategy would you recommend for clearing Yorvin's kill 20 enemies, one attack achievement? Ah, this was asked earlier, but... Play a Yorvin DPS formation. Go as far as you can. Get to the point where Yorvin is the only one killing things. Take Yorvin out of your formation and let all the enemies pile up on your tank. And once you got a big old mess going, put Yorvin back in the formation and watch them die. And you'll get it easily. Onyx squared. <laughs> Hi, room. Room? Okay, I guess Twitch chat overall is the room. Uh, Ayla is time gate only now, right? Hmm, maybe. Is Jazz Hands required? <laughs> no, Jazz Hands is not required. Um, let me open up my own Champion's Visual Aid. Love this thing. So I can check right on there. Let me just scroll down and find Ayla. There she is. Yep, Ayla is from the Greengrass event, and she is retired now. As of this year, she'll be a retired character. So yeah, good catch. You'll still you'll need to time gate her, definitely. Uh, Darkfan1, when you stream, how do you keep up with banter and chatter? I'm long-winded. <laughs> and I've always been an entertainer. It's, it's charisma. I just let things flow off the dome. I don't know. It's a natural talent for it, I suppose. It's not something I practiced. Although, the more you stream, the better you get at it. So, you do end up practicing. Everyone has a different starting point for any hobby, skill, or job that they might pursue, right? But streaming is like any skill. It's something that you do get better at the more you do it. You and I have different starting points. I have a different starting point than Garwar. But it's something that we get better at the more, we, the more often we do it. Um, how do I keep chatter and banter going? Asking questions helps a lot. So chat asks questions to me, and I answer them, and that just gets me going talking about something. And then I like to ask questions back to the chat. Like, hey, chat. Pulse check for the community right now. Jorvin versus Kroll, who are you focusing on and why? Because it's a consensus. It's ultimately like how the community values a champion is kind of like the, the, the Zeitgeist. It's, it's a consensus among everyone 
as the characters are discussed openly on public forums. This is as much a public forum as the Discord or anywhere else. So I'm seeing a lot of people say crawl. A lot of people are saying crawl. Oh, that's a great point because crawl's retiring. This is your last chance to easily, f well, relatively easily full epic crawl. Yeah, that does make sense. Some people are focusing Yorvin now that their crawl is filled up. Yeah. Yorvin's just expensive token-wise. Well, the free plays end up costing the same once you've done them enough. I'm expecting this free play is going to get to 1100 but not 1,200. I haven't done Orkira stacking yet. I haven't done Bayloth stacking yet. There's another probably 50 stages or more just from that. I will post the results on Discord or Twitter later today, since it'll definitely be off stream at that point. Um, oh, you know what? Hey. Let's see if we can't finish the unlock before I have to wrap up. Ooh, more health or more shield? More shield. All right. Oh, we've totally got this now. We totally got this now. This is going to be a Lucius unlock. Easy, easy, easy. Uh, okay, that takes us to 60 questions. Let's see if I can get a couple more while we're killing this thing. Loki Gromwell, any C and E woodcrafting? Like, officially? Um, Dave, one of the founders, also likes doing crafts. In fact, um, this is cool. <laughs> He works with metal. He he made these coins as a gift for me. They're pure copper. He made these coins as a gift for me when I went up to visit the offices for Extra Life. But he also works with wood. Not as much as metal, I think, but... Um, yeah. <laughs> It would be amusing if we, if uh, Dave and I had like a wood crafting <laughs> stream. <laughs> yeah, it'd be funny. Maybe we can do it as an extra life thing. I don't know. But hey, we beat it. We beat the uh, the Lucius unlock run. So I'll be able to finish this. And this will be unlocking Yorvin, Kroll, and Lucius on a brand new account. I don't even have an E number for my form favor yet. <laughs> wow. Yeah. There you have it. Um, thank you, everyone. I gotta... I gotta, you know, I gotta boogie now. I gotta hang up the phone. End the stream. That's it. Wow. Why am I struggling so much today? But thank you all for joining me for this episode of Mars Guiding Hand. I will see you all again next time. Next time will be Monday, 7 o'clock a.m. Pacific Time. Check out all the other awesome shows that we have. Coming up later, we've got Griddle Champions, so come back for that. Say hello to Lee for me. Um, I will be moderating for that one, so I'll also be there, uh, just off camera. Um, you can follow Idle Champions on social media. You can find me on Twitter, at Ryan Blake Hall. Please just call me Mars, it's my preference. Thank you to Codename Entertainment, as always, for the opportunity to give back to this community that I love so much play the game that I love so much. Thank you to Martin, my moderator for today. The other M literally couldn't do it without you, buddy. Appreciate it. And wherever you are in the multiverse, be safe, be kind, be patient with yourself. And until next time, look sharp. See ya. Do, 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 do.
Do, 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 do. Oh, thanks for saying that's a nice transition. Thanks, I really worked on that. It's a custom, custom job on that transition. Bye-bye.